Yesterday, my husband 32 years old and I 30 years old attended my best friend Sarah's baby shower. Sarah and I have been best friends since our college days. Initially, we became roommates, but our friendship grew stronger as we discovered our mutual love for similar music. We attended concerts together and created countless memories. By the time we reached our final year of college, we were practically inseparable, spending summers together in each other's homes. After completing our studies, we pursued different paths in our careers. I secured a highly sought-after position at a prominent law firm, fulfilling my longtime dream. On the other hand, Sarah wasn't sure about a traditional 9-to-5 job, choosing to explore social media for revenue. Despite our distinct schedules, we made it a priority to set aside our weekends for each other. Whether it was going on a hike, trying out a new restaurant, having drinks, or simply staying in to watch a movie, our bond remained strong. It was during one of our girls' nights out that I met Michael. He was attending his friend's bachelor party, and from the moment I set eyes on him, I knew he was the one for me. Although we playfully argue over who fell in love first, the truth is that we both fell deeply in love that very night. Fortunately, we've been happily married for five years now, and our marriage has been nothing short of perfect. I often express to Sarah how grateful I am that she invited me to the pub that night, otherwise, I would have never met my wonderful husband. While Sarah remained single for a few years after my marriage, she eventually met her current husband, Mark. The two of them celebrated their second anniversary three months ago. Sarah recently shared with me the exciting news that she is pregnant, and I am beyond ecstatic for her. I eagerly anticipated witnessing my best friend embark on this new chapter in her life and cradling her little one soon. Sarah honored me by entrusting the organization of her baby shower to me, as I was to be the baby's godmother. After considering various themes, we settled on yellow, Sarah's favorite color. Throughout the planning process, I maintained close communication with the caterer to ensure all details were in order, especially the timely delivery of the cake. Fortunately, I had previously worked with the caterer at my brother's wedding, making our collaboration seamless. On the day of the shower, we arrived a bit early to ensure perfection. Mark informed us that Sarah was still getting ready. While setting up, I noticed the cake wasn't placed on the table as Sarah had requested, so I promptly took care of it. As the guests started arriving, I was thrilled to see some of our old college friends. It had been years since we had seen each other, providing the perfect opportunity to catch up and share important life updates. Sarah, adorned in a vibrant yellow dress matching the baby shower's theme, had a radiant smile as everyone congratulated her. As the event progressed, everyone sat down to enjoy a delicious lunch. Everything seemed flawless until Sarah called for everyone's attention. She stood up, expressing gratitude for our presence at her baby shower, then took a deep breath before making a surprising announcement. I'm thrilled to tell you that my husband Mark and I are expecting our first child, and I have someone very special to thank for that. Mark appeared puzzled, trying to comprehend what was happening. Pointing directly at my husband Michael, she exclaimed, Everyone, I'd like to introduce the father of our baby. I nearly choked on my food in utter shock. The room fell into an eerie silence, and I sensed everyone's bewilderment and uncertainty about how to react. My mind raced, attempting to make sense of the unfolding situation. My husband, who avoids attention and usually keeps to himself, tightly grasped my hand under the table. I turned to him, finding a puzzled expression mirroring my own. All eyes were fixed on us in an uncomfortable and awkward silence. Seeking an explanation, I turned to Sarah. To provide some context, my husband and I had been trying to conceive for years without success. Despite undergoing numerous tests due to personal medical issues, we hadn't been able to get pregnant. I had confided in a select few, including Sarah, about our struggles. Eventually, we accepted that conceiving might not be in the cards for us and focused on being content with our lives together. Sarah publicly referring to my husband as the father of her baby was a blatant lie, and I couldn't help but feel hurt by her words. Tears welled up in my eyes, but I fought hard not to break down in front of others. Suddenly, Sarah burst into laughter, playfully nudging her husband Mark, exclaiming, I was just kidding, guys. This is all just a prank for my Instagram. I've set up cameras everywhere to capture your reactions. As everyone looked around, perplexed, 
I couldn't shake my irritation with Sarah for taking us on such an emotional roller coaster. It was disheartening that my best friend found humor in publicly pointing out my husband as the father of her baby, knowing full well the struggles we were facing in trying to conceive. I turned to observe my husband, noting the reddening of his face as he clung to my hands. It was evident how embarrassed he felt at that moment. While a few guests nervously chuckled, an overall sense of discomfort lingered in the room. I noticed Mark, Sarah's husband, refrained from joining in the laughter. Instead, he appeared more irritated than amused and exchanged an apologetic glance with my husband. Over the years, Mark and my husband had developed a strong friendship, and I sensed he empathized with our situation. Reluctant to confront Sarah and disrupt her baby shower, I opted to postpone any conversation. As the baby shower festivities continued, I struggled to shake off the unease that had settled in. Post-lunch, we engaged in a few games and eventually opened the gifts. Throughout these activities, Sarah was the only one seemingly enjoying herself chatting with guests and capturing moments for her social media. My husband, privately expressing his desire to leave after the disastrous lunch, reluctantly stayed at my request. I didn't want our exit to draw attention, so I assured him that I would address the situation with Sarah. However, it seemed Mark shared a similar discomfort and abruptly stood up with a stern expression. He requested Sarah to join him outside for a moment, signaling that something significant was about to transpire. As they conversed, the room could see and hear them. The atmosphere had already shifted to discomfort after Sarah's prank, and I watched as Mark's gestures grew more animated during their heated exchange. Suddenly, Mark's voice rose, and his words carried across the room. I'm astonished that you would pull something like this. There are closest friends, and it's more than just a harmless prank. You not only made a mockery of our baby shower, but also humiliated me in front of everyone. Sarah kept insisting it was just a harmless joke, but Mark wasn't buying it. He told her to grow up and not make sensitive jokes, especially when celebrating the impending arrival of their child. The room fell into an uncomfortable silence, and their words were crystal clear to all of us. Unable to bear it any longer, my husband abruptly left, informing me he would be waiting in the car. While my heart ached for my friend, I understood my husband's hurt and couldn't blame him for leaving. As my husband departed, Mark, comprehending the depth of the pain, turned to Sarah and declared, I'm done. I'm done with your immaturity. We're done. I'll love this child, but I can't be with you for one second longer. Sarah burst into tears upon hearing this, and Mark left the party. We were left in disbelief, unsure of how to react. Although my heart ached for my best friend, I knew my husband needed me more at that moment. I refrained from confronting Sarah after her difficult conversation with her husband and left the baby shower without saying goodbye. Upon reaching home, I observed the distress my husband was in, and both of us struggled to comprehend why Sarah would play such a prank on us. Later in the evening, Mark sent us an apology text expressing that he had no idea Sarah would play this prank for a video. He sincerely apologized for what we had endured. We appreciated his outreach, as we didn't want any animosity towards him and completely understood his perspective. Unfortunately, today, I woke up to several messages from Sarah. She explained that she played the prank due to stress from her pregnancy, wanting to create a viral reel for her Instagram. She couldn't comprehend why we were upset and questioned why I left without saying goodbye. She asked to meet today, so I could drive her to her gynecologist appointment. Feeling frustrated, I informed her that I didn't find her prank amusing. I explained that what she did was disrespectful, making both my husband and me uncomfortable. I also conveyed the need for some time away from her and that I wouldn't be able to take her to the appointment that day. Sarah responded by calling me a shitty friend claiming I left her during such a vulnerable time. This message upset me, as I couldn't believe she would say that just because I needed some space. When I shared Sarah's message with my husband, he was equally angry. He suggested we shouldn't engage with her until she understands the severity of her actions. I decided to send her a final message, stating I wouldn't speak to her until she apologized to both me and my husband for what she did. I also made it clear that if she dared to upload the prank video, I would take legal action against her. Rather than apologizing, Sarah responded by saying she didn't believe she had done anything wrong. She even went so far as to suggest I was jealous of her because of her pregnancy. 
Reading her reply, I couldn't believe that my best friend of over a decade would think I was jealous of her. I had gone above and beyond to give her the perfect baby shower. Sarah shared that she wouldn't be uploading the prank video but urged me to set my feelings aside and support her through this challenging period. She mentioned her husband hadn't come home the previous night and emphasized that she needed me now more than ever. As a non-confrontational person, her insensitive messages brought me to tears, realizing I couldn't continue this conversation. I made the tough decision to block her without any further response. Despite feeling guilty for not being there for my pregnant best friend due to the prank she played on us, I couldn't help but feel relieved that her husband had dumped her. Update 1 It has been a week since my last update, and a lot has unfolded. I want to emphasize that Sarah is not someone who typically jokes around, so her decision to play this prank came as a complete surprise. I've known her since our 20s, and she has never been one to pull pranks on anyone. Anyway, Mark was serious about leaving Sarah. My husband spoke with him over the weekend and discovered that Mark is actively seeking a divorce lawyer. Since that day, Sarah has been incessantly calling and texting him, urging him to come back and move past his feelings. However, Mark has not responded to her attempts at contact. She went further and accused him of having an affair with me, which was baseless. Mark is just sad that their marriage is ending because she is transforming into someone he doesn't recognize anymore. Since I blocked Sarah, she hasn't been able to contact me. Instead, she sent a lengthy message to my husband, accusing him of trying to ruin our friendship and implying that he isn't much of a man because we haven't been able to conceive. When my husband showed me the message after returning from work yesterday, I was furious. Until then, I had been trying to let things slide, assuming her sudden behavior change could be attributed to pregnancy hormones. However, her offensive words to my husband were completely unacceptable. Consequently, I decided it was time to teach her a lesson. As the person in charge of the baby shower, I was also responsible for the baby registry. I had spent numerous hours discussing Sarah's needs and coming up with a list of essential items for the new baby. However, Sarah insisted on including outrageously expensive items on the list, making it challenging for some guests to afford. During the baby shower, I observed that while some people stuck to the list, others gifted her items not included but useful for a new mother. Sarah appeared unhappy, and initially, I had intended to gift her a few of the expensive items from her list. However, once she crossed the line by targeting my husband, I immediately canceled the order and deleted the baby registry to prevent her access. If she wanted one now, she would have to create a new one from scratch. Additionally, a few days ago, I received a message from the caterer regarding the baby shower. Unfortunately, due to dealing with the situation with Sarah, I couldn't respond promptly. As a surprise gift to her, I had already paid half of the booking fees for the catering service and planned to settle the final amount after the baby shower. However, recent events distracted me, causing me to forget about it. I called the caterer, explained the situation to Sarah, and conveyed that I wouldn't be paying the remaining amount after the incident at the baby shower. The caterer, understanding the circumstances, informed me that since Sarah had booked the catering service under her name and had been in contact leading up to the baby shower, the final bill would be sent to Sarah instead of me. I was relieved not to spend any more money on someone who publicly insulted us and continued to send rude text messages. I informed my husband about the situation, and he found it amusing. Although I had considered reaching out to Sarah in the past few days, her message to my husband made it clear that I had moved past the point of forgiveness. I am grateful for everyone who supported me and helped me realize how toxic her behavior was. Reflecting on it, I can recall several instances where she put me down, but I never thought much of it until now. Regardless, I choose to stay positive and move on from this experience, not wanting to waste any more time or energy on her. Update to this woman is shameless. Days after my conversation with the caterer, I received an email from Sarah. The moment I saw her name pop up in my inbox, I knew she was back with her nonsense. In the email, she accused me of being cheap for not paying for the entire catering service, even though I could afford to do so. She labeled me as stuck up, claiming it was because I was born into my family's money. Sarah expressed her satisfaction that I could never be pregnant and went on to say that she had used me all these years to make her life easier. 
continuing her tirade. She repeatedly called me ugly and insinuated that I was undeserving of my husband. According to her, my husband had married me for my money because I was too ugly to be with. She accused me of driving a wedge between her and her husband, using explosive profanities throughout the email, and essentially resorting to name-calling. I shared the email with my husband, who immediately became infuriated. Over the years, both of us have gone above and beyond to help this woman in various ways. We had supported her through singlehood and multiple breakups, taken her on vacations, covering flight and room expenses, and my husband had even assisted her parents in repairing their house and lending them money. We had always treated her like family. My husband promptly reached out to Mark, inviting him for dinner to discuss the situation. When Mark arrived, we showed him the email, and the look on his face reflected sheer disgust. He also shared text messages he had received from her containing similar profanities and accusations of him cheating on her. We were deeply disturbed by the gravity of the allegation, recognizing it as something not to be casually thrown around, especially towards one's spouse. It was challenging to fathom that my former best friend, whom I had recently severed ties with, had undergone such a drastic change. Mark informed us that he was in contact with a reputable divorce lawyer, following the lawyer's advice to refrain from responding to her texts, regardless of their deranged and vile nature. He diligently kept screenshots of everything she sent him, including a photo of the email she had sent me to present to his divorce lawyer. Since posting the initial story, I've received a few direct messages from concerned individuals suggesting that Sarah might have neurological issues due to the sudden change in her behavior. To those expressing concerns, I want to clarify that Sarah has always had a temper issue, even back in college. Although I've never been on the receiving end of her anger, I've witnessed her quick temper and use of profanities in public spaces. While I doubt it's a medical issue, my husband and I still plan to reach out to her parents regarding this. We intend to disclose everything presenting all the messages and emails she sent us. If her parents feel that something might be wrong, they can decide whether to pursue medical evaluation. Despite everything, I have no intention of unblocking her or responding to her email. I've gone above and beyond for this woman, and her persistence in mistreating, demeaning, and disrespecting me is profoundly disheartening. I plan to leave this entire incident in the past and focus on enjoying my life with my husband and our dogs. The past few months have been a roller coaster of emotions, but I'm optimistic that everyone is having a fantastic start to the new year, just like my husband and I are. Currently, we are in the Maldives, taking a much needed break from our demanding careers. Given the challenges of the past year, we decided to disconnect from work and indulge in some relaxation time. Our days have been spent lounging on beaches and savoring refreshing cocktails at the resort. Addressing the much awaited update that many of you have inquired about, Mark and Sarah have officially divorced. The court case was contentious, with Mark's lawyer presenting evidence and their previously agreed upon prenuptial agreement. Despite Sarah's efforts with her lawyer, they were unable to win the case. Both parties have been ordered to create co parenting plans in the best interest of the child's well being. After reaching out to her parents about Sarah's erratic behavior, we discovered that she had to move back to her parents' house. Allegedly, due to her pregnancy and lack of proper work experience, she was unable to support herself for long, relying solely on social media. Our mutual friends revealed that, following the disastrous baby shower, everyone distanced themselves from her, wanting to avoid getting involved in her drama. Since filing for divorce, Mark refrained from visiting her until she was taken to the delivery room where he remained throughout the night to witness the arrival of their daughter. He has been content caring for the baby, spending time with her whenever possible, and fulfilling his responsibilities in terms of child support, as outlined in their agreement. He still gets together with my husband every weekend, either to play golf or enjoy drinks in the evening. Regarding the baby shower caterer, Sarah had no other option but to compensate the bill after the caterer threatened legal action. I have received subsequent emails from Sarah where she still holds me responsible for the way her life has turned out. Despite her parents taking her for numerous medical tests, she's perfectly healthy, and therefore, her immature actions have no excuses. Hopefully, for the sake of her daughter, she will try to change herself and become a better person in the future. As for me and my husband, we didn't let this incident affect our happy and healthy marriage. 
We moved past it after a month and focused on our personal and professional lives. We still make sure to go out on our Sunday dates, just like we did when we first started dating. Whenever I look at my husband, I still feel the same excitement and appreciation that I did when we first got together. I am grateful to be spending my life with him. I want to extend my empathy to all the couples who have expressed their difficulties in bearing children. I want you to know that it's perfectly fine, life has its ways, and we have to trust the journey. If you truly love your partner, there are other options available to become parents. However, my husband and I feel fulfilled with each other's company, and we have decided to focus on spending the rest of our lives in happiness together. Stay tuned for more stories from our channel.